Hi there, welcome to our second presentation on uh, elements of uh, matrix analysis. My name is Charles Swazfani. Uh, let's start this way. I think what we need to have now before we look at the again value problem, we need to remember that uh, we have got following vector spaces which it is uh, which we gave examples before uh, vector spaces we had r2 which we know that the elements here are column vectors of the form let's say a equals to two one i'm going to avoid using that arrow just to as we long know that they are vectors now just don't write a as a vector and also with r3 our vector space r3 in this case where here we've got elements like uh, let's say a in r3 would look like uh, one three Four. Let's say three component vector. Now, in looking at the <laughs> again vector problem, I think as a form of introduction, it is important to think briefly on what we call functions. Let's say with a function like f of x equals to x squared. Now we all know that these functions, this type of function you can represent it on graphically on a system of coordinates x, y coordinates and we know that the graph of this function is more or less like that. Now if we look at the function as a kind of transformation. I'm choosing the word transformation because it's important for our, for our purposes now. Transformation. A function like this, what does it transform? This is, this x-axis is a real number. And then the y-axis is also a real number. However, the function f, is this domain as um, the real numbers and its range also belong in the subset of real numbers. So what we can see here is that if this function picks a number like two, it exits in this way and it transforms it to, to four, which is also a real number. So we can say this quadratic function is a transformation we transform real numbers to real numbers. Now, where does that, uh, how is that relevant in our case here? Remember, I briefly showed you that if we take two <coughs> column vectors in R2, let's say we've got this vector here A, and another vector B, and let's say we've got vector B, which is 4, 1. And I say the easiest way, maybe the simplest way of getting a matrix would be just to pick this vector in one, as one entity this way, and then get one, one, and uh, 4, 1. Now, as the column vectors have been used to build up what we noise matrix of order two. Now, this matrix, I would also like to look at this as a, a transformation and what type of transformation? Let's see. Let's say with a, <clears throat> a vector like we have here, two, one, and we've got this vector, this matrix here. Now, if we look at the vector A, let's say this 
let me say a prime as a matrix column matrix two one and we've got maybe let's change our name here let's call this matrix here b and the simple call this matrix here a this is matrix which is standing for this vector a and uh, this is the matrix which we made from taking these two vectors together from a two by two matrix now thinking of multiplying uh, matrices i think if you revise this you can see that a multiplied by b is actually impossible That is, if you revise the, the operations of matrices. And on the other hand, B multiplied by A is possible. So if we say B multiplied by A, we will write here 1, 4, 1, 1 as a matrix. And our vector A, we will write it here. As a column matrix which is 2 1 and it's true that this is can my that because the type of this matrix is 2 by 2 and this one is 2 by 1 because the number of columns in matrix B coincide with number of rows in A then we know that these can be multiplied. Now, carrying out the multiplication, which I suppose everybody is clear of now, we'll take this row, multiply um, 2 by 1, and add to 1 by 4, then this means 1 times 2, plus 4 times 1 and then using the same column uh, matrix we multiply the last row here we get 1 times 2 plus 1 times 1 and then what we get from here we get 2 plus 4 which will give us 6 and then 2 plus 1, which will give us 3, and that is a matrix, that is a, a vector, a column vector in, uh, in R2. Now, looking at uh, this matrix as a transformation, we can see that this B is acted on this vector and transformed to a vector also in R2. So, in other words, we can say a matrix of order two is can actually be looked as as a transformation which acts on R two vectors and transform them to R two vectors. That is very important. Now. This is important for our, now writing this in short, we we'll would just say B, A, in other words, saying the matrix B is acting on vector A. So, and then that gives us a vector, which in this case we can call vector, let's say vector C, which is a new vector also in R2. So a two by two matrix, is a transformation which transforms column vectors in R2 to column vectors in R2. Where does this take us to? Let's look at another uh, example. Let's say with um, a matrix here, let's call it A, and this matrix is a 3, 1, Four, two. 
and with the vector here x which is equals to one three again if we want this matrix to act or transform this uh, vector we'll write a x now that takes us to writing three one four two multiplied by one three and then this also gives us three times one plus one times three and here it gives us four times one plus two times three and then we can see all of us that this gives us three plus three which is six and the four plus uh, six which gives us ten so again another vector in r2 so now this is where we we uh, we start talking or moving towards talking of eigenvalues and uh, eigenvectors. Let's see what we've just seen here. What we've seen here. Now let's consider again the matrix. Let's say in this case we're going to consider matrix A, which is the same matrix we looked at before, which is one four and uh, one one. and the vector two and the one. So what we want to do here, I want to, through this example, to start experiencing something which when we give it a name, you have a, a good feel of what it is. Let's say now we've got A, X, Let's call this vector x, and then we can see all of us that it's a vector in R2. Now, when we do this operation or transform this vector by one matrix 1, 4, 1, 1, we see that we've got, we've got here 2, 1. We carry out the multiplication, we get 2, 1 times 2 plus 4 times 1, and you get 1 times 2 plus 1 times 1. We put our brackets there, then we get that we put 6 there, and here we get 3. Then on the other end, let's say we've got another vector here, which is um, y, which is 4, 3. We want to use exactly the same matrix, a, get a, y. Let's try to calculate this. And then 1, 4, 1. One, you should carry out the calculation because in case I make a mistake here, you must be able also to detect what mistake I've made so that you, in the process, you learn. You yeah, just notice here that um, for column vectors, I can use either use square brackets or that's why it doesn't matter, the same thing. So now what we get here now is um, 4 times 1, which is 1 times 4 plus um, 4 times 3 and then you go to 1 times 4 plus 1 times 3 which will give us 12 plus 4 which is 16 
and here to give us 4 plus 3, which is 7. Now, for the purposes of what we want to discuss, it is important now to analyze the relationship of what or of these results to the vectors which we started with. If you check the first vector here, we started with the x, which was 2, 1, we got 6, 3, which we can actually write as a scalar 2 multiplying, sorry, it's scalar 3 multiplying the vector 2, 1. I hope you can see that this is true. We multiply this, they get 6, we multiply that, you get 5. And then on this side, if we try to do something similar, we don't have, in our words, this vector here is not equal to any scalar lambda multiplied by the vector we started with, in this case, which is 4 multiplied by 4, 3. That's, that's where that's what we want to get. Now, observe in the first vector with the first vector here and the a, we have managed to say to get to a point that we see that a x is equals to three times x. In other words, transforming the vector x by matrix a looks exactly the same as multiplying the vector x by 3. Then, I think at this point, we are ready to define something. You know, what I'm saying is, if you, whenever you're given a matrix A and a vector x, you transform that, you see that this gives you some lambda multiplied by vector x. For that kind of situation, then we have got a name for lambda, we have got a name for x with respect to the matrix A. Lambda is going to be called here again value. And the x is going to be called the corresponding again vector. So at this point, what do we have defined? What the what we're defining in this case, we're defining what we call an eigen value corresponding to the matrix A, in this case it's lambda, and the eigen vector X is an eigen vector corresponding to the matrix to the eigen value lambda. Now, so what does this take us to? This takes us to that this equation which we have here, we can also write it in this way, A X minus lambda x equals to a zero vector because remember what you get here the vector so this this is a vector this is a vector so separating vectors they will get zero in this case we get a zero vector which we can also say this is equivalent to saying a minus lambda, but now we should be careful here. I can just, just write A minus lambda because this lambda is a number and this is a matrix. So I will say lambda multiplied by the identity matrix of the same order x is equal to zero. This is the equation which actually leads us to the whole theory of Eigenvalues and the 
Jürgen vectors. Now, what is important is that when you look at this uh, equation, you must be able to see that if this matrix is of order n by n, to be able to multiply by this vector, this vector must have uh, n rows. Now, if we, and then this, also this zero vector will also have n entries as a column vector. And actually this equation then generates what you can call a system of linear equations. Linear equations. Now, then this takes us also, then this takes us to the thinking of the theory of linear equations which tells us when is this system having solutions. You, let's say, for example, unique solution, infinite solutions, or there's no solutions. And the theory in this case says that this system will have non-trivial solutions because when I'm talking about trivial, in this case, I'm talk, um, referring to an obvious solution. Now, like in this case, if x this vector is zero, this will be true. But in this case, for that would not that would be interesting. We need vectors here, x, which actually non-zero or let's say non-trivial vectors x. So the theory says this system of equation will have non-trivial vectors if the determinant of the matrix a minus lambda by identity is equals to zero. And then this also takes us to another concept of what we call a characteristic equation. This determinant actually will give us what we call the characteristic equation. This characteristic equation will have a a solution and then in this case the, the, the equation comes in terms of lambda so the lambdas we get here if this matrix is of order n then it will mean that we'll get an equation here of order n therefore we're going to get lambda 1 lambda 2 and 2 lambda n as eigenvalues corresponding to the matrix A. And then once we've got eigenvalues, then we can substitute each one of them in this equation, getting a system of linear equation, which will then help us to get the Eigen vectors. I think up to this point, what you should have squarely seated in your heads is the concept of what you call an eigenvalue and what you call an eigenvector. Like in the case of this matrix A and this vector, we'll call three the eigenvalue corresponding to this matrix and this vector 2, 1 is the eigenvector. Now, our task, what will follow now, is to learn how to determine eigenvalues corresponding to given matrices, and then later determine the eigenvectors for an introduction. Let me let's simple discuss C the look at the following. Let's have an example. 
we're going to take the same matrix A, which is one, one, four, one. And then, then they say, they say we didn't know that three was an eigenvalue of the. So according to that, we said we get the eigenvalues from the characteristic equation, which is that determinant equals to zero. Now, if we unpack this notation here, what we have here, we're going to have a determinant of matrix A, which is one, four, one, one, which is a matrix minus lambda I. Remember I in this case is an identity matrix, which is, it has got ones on the principal diagonal. Then if you multiply by lambda, which means lambda is going to be along the principal diagonal and zeros outside. So we've got here lambda zero zero lambda. So before before we can think of calculating the determinant, we need to simplify what is inside here. When we subtract here, we have one minus lambda, which is one minus lambda and the four minus zero which will give us zero, four and then one minus zero will give us one and then one minus lambda that will give us one minus lambda so according to the characteristic equation this determinant must be zero also supposing that everybody knows how to calculate determinants um, then this will give us uh, 1 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda minus 4. And that will be equal to 0. Now, if you look careful at the right hand side of this equation here, you can see that you've got 1 minus lambda squared minus two squared equals to zero, which gives us a difference of two squares, which you know is factors. This is a squared minus b squared give us one minus lambda, which is our a plus two brackets, one minus lambda minus two, and this gives us zero. As you can see, you need a lot more than only matrices. Like you need to know your factorization, determining factors. Now, all your general mathematics must be fresh here so that you can proceed easily. So now, this is the number multiplied by number equal to zero. So that means that if a times b equal to zero is either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero, then that takes us to one minus lambda plus 2 equals to 0 or 1 minus lambda minus uh, 2 equals to 0. So what you can see here, if we simplify here, it's minus 2 plus 1, we get minus 1, then we get lan minus lambda minus uh, 1 equals to 0, that will take us to saying lambda is equals to minus, um, minus 1. And on the other end here, we've got minus lambda plus 3 equals to 0. Then we've got here um, lambda is equals to Three, which is the eigenvalue we saw when we computed, we transformed it to one. Now, as you can see, now 
the matrix is of order 2 by 2 and we come up here with the quadratic equation and because of theorem of quadratic or for equations we know that if equation is of order 1 then you've got a unique solution but if it's equation of order 2 then you've got two possible solutions so now in this case we've got lambda 1 equals 2 3 and lambda 2 again vector equals 2 minus 1 so which means we've got another set of eigenvectors which correspond to eigenvalue minus 1 but uh, for now our purpose is to calculate eigenvalues so now just for practice and uh, consolidating the concept of eigenvalues I would like you to do the following uh, exercise exercises. Let's say examples. Please here check which of the two given vectors here is an again vector, and uh, also try to see if we can determine which one is the eigenvalue. But given a matrix B, which is a 1, 2, 2, 1. And then you have vector A, vector A, which is 1, 1 and another vector b which is uh, 3 2 the task is try to determine which of the two is an eigenvector and in case it's an eigenvector uh, determine also what is a, what is the eigenvalue you are also given in c which is 0 3, 3, 0, and the vectors given here are C, uh, so let's say D, which is 4, 2, and 2, 2, And um, nine, ten. Determine. Call this vector um, E, and then call this one F. Determine which one of the three is uh, again vector. And in case it's an again vector. You also determine what is the again the corresponding again value. Now, I think as far as um, the concepts which I wanted to introduce here concerned, this is enough for introduction. So, just summarizing, we must note that we will always talk of again values corresponding to a given matrix, then given eigenvalues, we talk of eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalue. So in other words, everything starts from the fact that sometimes when we transform vectors by matrices, it appears as if the vectors we transform are multiplied by a scalar lambda, then it appears as if that ax is equal to lambda x. Then there, we like we noted that lambda then we call them again value, and the x the vector we call the again value, uh, vector. And then what we need not to forget that this equation can be transformed again to an equation which looks like this.
equal to zero. And also here we have to evoke the theorem of uh, system of equations when they have so, so, so you said this equation is going to have a solution when actually non-trivial solution when the determinant of a minus lambda i is equal to zero, which you said this gives us what you call calculus equation, an equation which when we solve, we then learn the values of lambda, which are e again values. Values which when we have, we come and substitute here, we can then determine again vectors. So I think with this, what we've done here, with one example, you can start practicing, but in our next presentation, we're going to look at uh, various examples where we compute again values, and then we'll later proceed to calculate, uh, determining again vectors given the again values. For now, what I can say, thank you for listening, and then let's meet in the next presentation, which will be more of a, a practical, or let's say a kind of a tutorial on computing, again, values. Thank you for listening once more.